The images you are currently seeing depict Germans cross-dressing, posing as women. They appear comfortable and uninhibited, behaving naturally as if accustomed to it. However, and though you may find it hard to believe, the individuals featured in these photographs are none other than soldiers of Adolf Hitler's army. Today in this new episode of Military History, we will tell you everything you didn't know about homosexuality during the Nazi era. To understand the persecution of homosexuality in the Third Reich, we have to go back to the 1920s. After World War I, Germany adopted a new form of government called the Weimar Republic. As a consequence of the war, significant cultural changes occurred in society, and the gay community believed it was an ideal time to stop hiding. Homosexuals created a movement to fight for their rights and freedoms, aiming to promote tolerance so that everyone could be themselves. Berlin was one of the most important cities in the community, filled with clubs, associations, and bars for non-heterosexual individuals. The most famous of all was El Dorado, known for its lively parties with an atmosphere of great sexual freedom. There, costume dances, erotic games, and cross-dressing shows were celebrated, making it one of the most iconic places in the city. Despite a relative tolerance toward homosexuals in Germany, discrimination persisted. The Sherman Panel Coda highlighted the infamous Article 75, which stated that relationships between men were a crime. During the 1920s, the gay community did everything possible to repeal this, arguing that it violated individual freedoms. However, the law remained in force and love between men continued to be a crime. At the same time, there were sectors of society concerned about the advancement of homosexuals, aiming to restrain them and push them back into the closet. Among them was the National Socialist Party. For the Nazis, tolerance toward homosexuals was a sign of the decay of the Weimar Republic. Hitler's followers claimed that gay men were effeminate and incapable of fighting for their homeland. As they couldn't have children, they were betraying the Aryan race and condemning Germany to a population decline making it susceptible to domination by inferior races. Homosexuality, in essence, was an aberration that needed to be corrected with fire and blood to save the German nation from destruction. Interestingly, not all members of the gay community were concerned when Hitler came to power in 1933. On the contrary, some believed that Hitler's threats against homosexuals were mere empty words. This was because Ernst Röhm, the leader of the SA and one of the main lieutenants of Nazism, never denied his attraction to men. Let's see how Albrecht Becker, a gay German who lived through Hitler's rise, remembers this. Röhm war ein schwuler Mann, das war bekannt, ja? Und jeder sagt uns dann, ja, wenn der schwul ist, dann, dann können wir uns auch ausleben. Und wir haben uns ausgelebt, genauso wie, also ohne Blatt vor den Mund zu nehmen, haben wir gelebt wie also wenn das Staatsreligion gewesen wäre, ja. Few suspected that the tolerance of the Weimar Republic was about to come to a tragic end. Already in 1928, the National Socialist Party, in an official statement, was candid about its views on homosexuality. It stated, Free love is an obscenity. That is why we repudiate it, just as we reject anything that harms our people. Those who advocate emotional relationships between men or between women are our enemies. We do not want a castrated nation or one turned into the plaything of our rivals. Not all of the gay community took these threats seriously, and many paid the consequences for not doing so. Hitler's followers promoted the persecution of homosexuals as soon as they seized power. The first significant episode occurred on May 6, 1933, when a group of SA youth entered the Institute for Sexual Science headquarters and confiscated its library. This place had been founded by Magnus Hirschfeld, a gay Jew who dedicated his life to sexology and promoting gay rights. Days later, the Institute's 12,000 volumes were publicly burned in a book-burning event. Meanwhile, the circulation of newspapers and magazines in the gay community was banned. Gay organizations tried to burn their membership lists to prevent them from falling into the hands of the Nazis. Nevertheless, note that the majority of bars and clubs were not closed and remained open. For the average homosexual, life was not very different during the early months of the Third Reich. 
Although the social climate was perceived as more tense, the fear of the Gestapo had not yet sunk in, and some even joined the SA, thinking they would be protected by their leader. Things changed drastically on June 30, 1934, with the Night of the Long Knives. During that day, Hitler purged the SA and ordered the assassination of Ernst Röhm, who was shot in the chest. Official propaganda justified the carnage by accusing him of corruption and treason, mentioning his sexual orientation as one of the reasons for his execution. Let's return to the testimony of Albrecht Becker, who explains the consequences of the massacre. Und dann in, 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 und dann ist auch noch nichts, was war im Juni, von Juni bis, bis Oktober, bis, bis Jahresende, ist überhaupt nichts passiert. Und plötzlich haben sie dann äh, alle schwulen Leute gejagt und eingesperrt. In Oktober 1934, the Nazis compiled lists of the names of homosexuals from all cities in Germany. Simultaneously, the Gestapo created a special commission dedicated to investigating emotional relationships between men. By the end of the year, massive raids began in Berlin and Munich. As a result of police operations, hundreds of people accused of not being heterosexual were arrested. Interestingly, the Nazis reserved their hatred for gay men, as lesbians were not considered criminals, but were labeled as antisocial. In 1935, the Ministry of Justice of the Third Reich amended the infamous Article 175 of the Penal Code. The reform aimed to expand the actions punishable by law, so physical contact between men was no longer necessary to be considered a criminal. Instead, even an indecent look at a person of the same sex was sufficient to be considered an offender. It went so far as to claim that impure thoughts between men constituted an offense against morality that had to be sanctioned. Penalties ranged from six months to five years in prison and could include the suspension of the defendant's civil rights. Occasionally, the only way to avoid conviction was to undergo a painful voluntary castration. The procedure could be done chemically, although sometimes it involved a vasectomy or testicle amputation. Those who refused such humiliation ended up behind bars. Let's see the testimony of Stefan Kosinski, who was arrested for being gay, talking about how he was mistreated by other prisoners in his cell. If I were thief, if I were murder, they could accept me, but not this. There was no mercy for those arrested twice, as they were sent directly to concentration camps, where they had to correct their sexual orientation or die trying. It is estimated that between 1933 and 1945, the police arrested 100,000 homosexuals, of whom 15,000 were taken to the camps. Once inside, the inmates were identified with a pink triangle on their uniform, so everyone knew the reason they ended up there. Along with Jews, gays were one of the most mistreated and abused groups by the guards. For the Nazis, Homosexuality was a humiliating disease that could be cured through hard work and suffering. Therefore, they were assigned tasks that required the most physical effort and had high mortality rates. In some cases, these prisoners were forced to exchange sexual favors with members of the SS. In return, they could receive protection for a short period, albeit aware that the abuser could tire of them at any moment and condemn them to death. As if that weren't enough, they were also used as guinea pigs for gruesome medical experiments. Their bodies were used to test new drugs with opioids and methamphetamine, and they were subjected to innovative treatments against typhus. In the vast majority of cases, they perished shortly afterward. However, the most brutal experiment was a supposed cure for homosexuality, which involved implanting a gland under the skin that released testosterone. As expected, the result was a failure as no patient survived. Meanwhile, outside the concentration camps, the situation of the gay community continued to worsen as World War II destroyed Europe. In 1941, Hitler gave a speech suggesting that homosexual members of the Hitler Youth should be executed. However, things were more complex than they seemed. The Third Reich never managed to purge homosexuality and despite Hitler's displeasure, there were gays within the ranks of Nazism. As shown at the beginning of the video, 
There are surviving photographs that show German soldiers cross-dressing, wearing makeup, and posing as women. Let's see what Martin Damon, the artist who found these images, has to say about it. Also, das ist auf einmal ähm, äh, eine gewisse Weichheit, eine Sentimentalität. Die kommen auf einmal als Menschen mit Sehnsucht daher. Clearly, the official propaganda that labeled these practices as immoral did not penetrate deeply enough into the troops who saw them as a simple pastime and something to entertain themselves with even when in the battlefield. Of course, it is challenging to know for sure whether these men were homosexuals or just open-minded individuals who did not succumb to Nazi preaching. In any case, we can affirm that emotional relationships between men continued to exist, some of whom were even members of the Wehrmacht. Let's return to the testimony of Stefan Kosinski, who recalls the encounter he had with a German soldier. He took me in his arm, he said, you are very nice boy, you are pretty boy. Every, really, no, nobody said me that, nobody. Uh, he looked at me, at my eyes. I looked at him and he kissed me. Oh my God, he German boy kissed me. And then he said, it was friendship. Yes, only friendship, nothing more. Yes, thanks. I kiss him also because of friendship. They met on the street by chance, and the soldier offered to accompany him home to ensure he arrived safely. With the defeat of Nazism and the end of World War II, discrimination against homosexuals did not end. Being gay was also considered a crime in some allied countries, a situation that did not change until decades later. Similarly, the view in Germany on the gay community was profoundly influenced by Nazi propaganda, portraying it as sick and degenerate. Article 175, which penalized love between men, was only repealed in 1969, nearly 25 years after the fall of the Third Reich. Today, those dark days are remembered as the most intense persecution against German homosexuals, who were among the most affected by the Nazi dictatorship. We have reached the end of the video, Leave your comments in the box below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history.